something I read about Teddy Roosevelt is that even on his deathbed, he had a book underneath his pillow. And I think that you'll see that the people at the highest level of this, they grinded their way early on. They continue to set up better, repeatable systems, hire the best people that they could, hold those people accountable, execute at a high level, and always be curious of better ways to do things. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Eat, Sleep, and Invest. I'm your host, Brian Driscoll, and I'm here with Leon Barnes. What's going on, Leon? Hey, Brian. What's up, man? Good to see you. Long time. Right? Too yeah. long. Leon, give everybody a little background, because I know you have background in real estate and also with uh, CG. Give everyone a little background on like, how you got into the space and what you do. Yeah. So I love what I do. I get to talk to great investors uh, like yourself on a daily basis. Uh, my official title is VP of membership with the collective genius. Whatever that title means, I don't know, but here's what it does mean. It means that I get to talk to investors across the United States that want to continue to scale and grow their businesses. And our great uh, community, the collective genius helps them do that. Now, more so than ever, I've been on this side for six years. I was a member uh, for a year prior to that. Just loved everything about this community. Brian, you and I have talked about this a lot is that you know, it's a it's a go giving community, and there's just you know my reward in life is helping others get to their uh, scale to their goals, and uh, nothing more rewarding than that. Real estate investors that want to actually grow their business come in this community, help each other. I mean, that's a that's a pretty great gig that I have, and getting to travel and spend time with investors like yourself a few times a year is always fun as well. Here's what I like about CG. So, I, so like when I'm at the events, it's like you can bring. What, number one, there's a lot of smart people there, right? So everyone brings like what they know, but more importantly, it bring, you bring like, what do you suck at? Yes, so you can find yes. out because there's other people in the room that are really good at it or have er already did it, like what you're trying to figure out. So it's, it saves like a ton of learning curve. That's, that's the hope. I mean, the, the, we don't even call it a mastermind anymore. It is a member driven community. Members come there to get better learn what others are doing across the United States. We have now four levels, over 450 total members within the Collective Genius. And so wherever you are at in your business, as long as you're a full-time real estate investor doing a couple of deals a month, we have a community for you. And you know this, you know, you want to be in the room where hopefully you're not necessarily the dumbest, but you know, you're one that's growing within the group. Um, and a lot of people say that I want to be the dumbest person in the room. Well, you don't want to necessarily be the dumbest, but you definitely want to be able to give some value because usually in a community like ours, when you give value, you, you 10 X return that because people will say, this is someone that's really engaged in wanting to help others. And that's always been the, we're 13 years strong now at the collective genius. And the reason that the community is, is thriving and growing is because we look for a very specific real estate investor that's growth minded, but more importantly, wants to help others along the way. And what you just mentioned is so true. That growth, um, that, that pattern of, I want to get, go from, you know, X amount uh, of deals per month and X amount of revenue, that learning curve. If it's going to take someone a couple of years generally to do it on their own, usually when you come into a community like this, you have someone that has the blueprint that can get you there much, much quicker and more efficient. Yeah. And that's huge too. And it's different than like a lot of places, especially in the real estate, you sign up, a lot of, a lot of guys sign up for courses. It's like, okay, that's I think right. I'm going to sign up for a course. Then I'm going to go across it. And you just have the blueprint. You don't have the people, you don't have the mistakes, things like that. That's so right. I think that's a lot where it differentiate here. Cause everyone's pretty transparent on like the issues they're dealing with and how yeah. you got to hustle and work hard. You know what I mean? I've seen that change a lot. I've seen that change a lot over the over the time. When I first joined Collective Genius in 2015 as a member, um, we were looking, we were flipping, you know, 50. Uh, in fact, back then there was one community. In order to qualify, you had to do at least 50 transactions a year to get in. And I remember we had just qualified that that one year by doing 54 flips the year prior to that. And we had just barely gotten into the group. And we were in the room with people doing 250 deals a year. And most of the people that were in that room were like, I want to be in this room because this is a giving room. Other rooms that I've been in, people are holding, you know, all their quote unquote secrets, you know, to their chest. They were holding them tight. I don't want to tell anybody about what I'm doing in my particular marketplace because I don't want them to do what I'm doing. What's changed over time 
as people are more willing to share because they realize there's really no secrets. There's just execution. Obviously, there's a game plan that you can a system, a process that you can learn from someone else. And if you're someone that is driven and executes at a high level, clearly you're going to be in the top you know, 10% of your marketplace or in just in general in the industry. So I've seen a lot less of this. I got to hold my secrets tight to my chest and more of a giving just in general in real estate investing. So that is a, you know, that's something that I've seen continue to grow and is exciting for, for us as a community because we've always been, if you're in this group, you've got to share. Uh, you, you can't come into this group expecting just to take, take, take. You've got to give back. Now, and here's something cool too, which Leon, I'm going to have you elaborate on this, but talking about being the dumbest guy in the room, smartest guy mm-hmm. in the room, stuff like that. Sometimes I've found myself in a room, not necessarily in the real estate space, but in some rooms, this stuff's like way over my head. That's right. So what I like with what you guys did is you kind of look at where people are in their career and kind of put them with people to the next level. So if you can talk a little bit like how you guys do that. So until four years ago, and it's even short of four years ago, but just three and a half years ago, we we started looking at the room that we had with the Collective Genius. It used to be, as I mentioned before, 50 transactions or revenue equivalency to get into CG. Well, what changed is about three years into this, I started to notice that the people that we were putting into the group that were just barely qualifying, Brian, they were, they were getting lost. And they were like, we love this group, but we're getting lost and we're just, we're spinning our wheels because there's too many shiny objects and we're just not ready for this room. And so I started to hear that more because people, when they come into our community, they don't just leave after a year. Now, the exception, there are exceptions to every rule, but generally people stay four plus years within this community. So if they were leaving, I, there's, a, there's an issue. So I wanted to get to the bottom of that. And that was just, uh, as I mentioned, almost four years ago. And so what we realized is that, you know, like a ladder, when you're climbing the ladder, whether that's a corporate ladder or an entrepreneur ladder, there are rungs to that ladder, right? If someone is currently three years in the business, say doing 30, 40 transactions in a, in a year, and maybe they're, you know, 28 years old. If you put them on the top rung, they may learn a few things, but at the same time, they may get overwhelmed and fall back to the bottom because they've skipped some of the rungs to get to the top. And so what we've tried to create within this community is rung after rung. When you're ready for the right room, you're in that particular room. And so we now have four different levels. That's where the, you know, the organic growth has really come from within this community. And when people are ready to get to the next level, they're promotable. And we typically know by deal flow, by team size, uh, by revenue, when they're ready. I'm happy to say that three and a half years ago, we created our first, our second community, I should say, our CG Select Group generally for people doing 30 to 100 transactions. And in the time frame that we created that community, we've grown a community from zero to almost 200 members and 30 promotions from CG Select up to CG, our CG Premier, which is the group that has been around the longest. So the goal, Brian, is to fit people in the room where they can give value and also get value where it's not at a graduate level, right? It's at whatever level they're at right now. Maybe that's undergraduate, maybe that's high school level, what have you. We're trying to put them in the right room at the right time. That's important too, to be in the right room. Okay, let's, let's talk about this. Say somebody's coming to CG or any mastermind just in general. What tips do you have? Because like, like a lot of times, like I'll even go to this stuff. I don't know anybody mm-hmm. back in the day. It's like, what tips do you have for people when they walk in? Number one, like, how to get involved, how to get engaged with the room, how to, how to build the connections, how to deliver value. Like you see that a lot. Like what tips do you have people that are walking in? that are just like nervous and anxious. Don't know anybody. I love this question, Ryan, because this is relatable to any community. It doesn't have to be a mastermind. This could be your local RIA. Um, I, no one's ever asked me this question. I appreciate this one. When I see people that get the most value typically as a new kid at school, you know, this is the first time they've ever been to this event is number one, check their ego at the door. 
We talk about that. That's within our core values. It's something that we um, start every meeting with. I don't care how big you are. Someone in that room is either better at something or bigger, right? Um, so check your ego at the door and be humble and come in to give value, right? If there's something that you know and you hear someone say, I'm struggling with this and you can help them with that, the best way to make relationships is to to reach out to that person and say, I think I might be able to help you with that. And don't be a, don't be afraid and sit on your hands. I have a lot of people that say, you know, hey, I'm I'm a, I'm an introvert. How should I how should I go about this? I'm not typically good in big crowds. Well, even in a big crowd, you can make your own small group by introducing yourself in a, maybe in a, in a in a coffee setting or a lunch setting during those rias, those meetings, what have you. My first advice would be to check your ego and then just make sure you meet as many people as possible. At the Collective Genius, when people sit in the corner and they're typing on their, you know, their, their laptop or they're, they're texting the entire meeting. Those are people that typically they, they never engage. And so they never get the full power of this community. And typically I go and point those people out and get them off their laptop and get them to, to talking and introducing them to someone because generally the relationships that you will make in a lot of these rooms are people that you will do life with beyond just business. Yeah. And it's funny there too. Number one, sitting in front of your computer, things like that. You you travel the whole way. Like you guys have some awesome events in Florida, California, like on the beach. That's right. You spend all the energy and money to get there. And I get it. Sometimes you're nervous. It's like I don't know what to do. It's like yeah, you just got to be in. All you got to do is say hi to somebody because everyone's there for the same reason. Other people are feeling the same thing too. So I'll give one more hack. Uh, the other hack would be. Anytime you're going to these type of events, you ask the individual like myself or anyone else in the membership community or on the membership team within the community, you ask them simply, what do new people do um, out of the gates to have the most impact and meet the most and make the, mo the, the best relationships? And they'll typically give you that. One thing that we do within our community when someone is a new member we put them in a room before the event starts. We typically start at 10 a.m. Uh, there's networking that we do from 9 to 9.30. And about 9.15, we pull all of our new members. We had 44 new members from our, our May meeting to our October meeting that we just had in Dallas last week. All 44 of those members went into a new member orientation that was one of our service providers, one of our lenders, uh, sponsored a dinner for them together. So we make sure they, they almost have like their class. You know, we all had high school classes and college classes and reunions and things like that. You'll always remember if you came into Collective Genius in October of 24, you'll always remember the members that you started with because you already do not feel like a new kid at school because you know these are the other new kids at school and you get an opportunity to network with them before the meeting even starts. So we intentionally make sure that relationships are created right out of the gates. And it, it keeps people from going to their laptops early because they already have, you know, in this particular case, 43 other people that they can go and talk to that they've already met. Yeah. I remember Medley told me back in the day too, he says, when you're coming to an event, come with intention. It's like, here are the things that I can help people with. And here are the things that I need help with. That's right. And like, come with you versus just roaming around and like winging it. I will say this, that's hard, your first first meeting at a, in a community like this, because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. But, but that said, coming with intention to, here's what I always say. If you can think of the thing that you would impact your business at the highest level with the least amount of effort and return the most amount of revenue, if you can think of that one thing from zero to one, what is it that I can go implement? Sometimes it's just another marketing channel. Sometimes it's one extra hire. That type of intentionality, absolutely, you can get that one thing. Because you, you even if you come in and you, you look at your business and you say, you know, I was headed down the wrong path. And now because of this medium, I'm hitting a different path. The one thing that won't change is you potentially ne still need another marketing channel. You potentially still need another hire, even if you're going to change the trajectory of, of, of the business model. So I think that's something that Jason and I talk quite often about is how do we make sure that people come to every single meeting, even if they've been with us for 13 years, 
How do we make sure that they come and set the intentionality of this is the one thing that I know I need the most? And those things change over the years. But every single meeting you should come in, whether that's, again, a local RIA or any community that you're a part of, set your intention of this is what I need to get from this particular meeting. At the same time, don't be so zeroed in on that that you miss the nuggets that will totally impact the, in, the, and change the trajectory of your business. Yeah, it's weird too. Like I'll go to events and I look back on it. I'm like, wow, I actually, I got something from the event that was totally unexpected. Or like, for example, even yesterday, I was just texting a guy, someone I know has a property in Alabama. They just inherited it. I don't know anyone. I'm in Pittsburgh. <laughs> so it's like, hey, who's the guy in Alabama that's trustworthy? Because you got to watch. Like, I, I want to connect someone with someone that's trustworthy, things like that. So number one, you have the connections, even just stuff like that, just to, to uh, network between, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that from that standpoint, any market that you would ever need help in, we always have members or people that um, we've talked to that we are working on getting into the community that we always have a connection in any market. Um, that's number one. Number two, let me give you the power of a, a group like CG beyond just uh, business. Uh, twofold. Number one, uh, we all support nonprofit organizations and we built homes in Mexico uh, with our families for needy families. We have uh, groups that go to Guatemala together. They, they do life together beyond uh, just business. And like you said, you didn't necessarily come for that. But when you do see that and other people that are like minded, just like you that want to that maybe didn't grow up with with money, now have it and want to be able to give back and, and show their kids that not everyone lives the way that they live. I mean, I can tell you that that's important for me. Um, so that's one way. The second way is, so recently, uh, the Tampa Bay area, which is where CG is located and has been headquartered for the last 13 years, we had two hurricanes come through here back to back. Um, the last one was a Category 5 approaching the Tampa Bay area. And we have uh, a land investor in Louisiana uh, that happens to be a meteorologist as well. And he sent Jason and myself a text. Now, think about this. We've got a land investor that is a meteorologist, still does some meteorology on the weekends in his, in his station in Louisiana. And he sent us a simple text and said, get out now. And mainly because of not necessarily because he was worried about us flooding and all those things like Katrina that he's witnessed in the past, but mainly because he knew that the, the aftermath, the not having electricity, uh, the, no gasoline, um, uh, grocery stores not uh, being open, all of those things he predicted came true. In the meantime, as I'm looking for a place to go, and in the, the whole storm took up all of Florida. So I was like, I don't want to stay in Florida. There's going to be tornadoes and everything else across if you go east or center uh, the center of the state. So I had offers to fly to the UK, uh, New York to California and everywhere in between. He ended up settling a good uh, good friend of mine because of membership here. Ren Bartlett uh, offered his condo to us uh, in the Gulf Coast area in Alabama. So my family, we all packed up and drove. You know how many text messages I got during that time frame of come stay with us. You got a place here in PA. You got a place here in New York. Anywhere you want to, you know, it, just get out of there and come come to us. That type of support, I hadn't felt that because we just hadn't been in through anything like this. I knew it was there, but to actually see the type of text messages and emails and Facebook messages that we got during that time, that's the that that's the the part of communities like this that you don't know exist until you go through you know a, a natural disasters like two hurricanes back to back within a two week time frame. Yeah, that, that, that's very true, and everyone is pretty given in the, in the community. Let me switch it up a little bit, Leon. So let me ask you this: so you guys deal, or you guys have members in the group that are crushing it? Yeah. From starting to crush it, the guys like doing like hundreds and thousands of deals per year. What are, say, like the top couple characteristics or these, what are the things these guys are doing that's different than most people that you see? Number one is execution. I think I mentioned that before. There's no secrets to this. It's just executing at a high level and sustain execution. I think that's those two combined things is, I think Jason says this all the time, is the reason that, you know, CG um, is what it is today is because his early grind days of out suffering others, 
right? Is like, I'm just going to continue to make this the best community that I possibly can. And if that means I've got to work 80 hours a week out of the first couple of years, that's what I'll have to do. And so I see that trait uh, for a lot of the, especially the, the highest level. We have a CEO group, which is $10 million businesses in real estate investing and above that are in that level. Um, if I took, you know, the, the, the sample size or I took the DNA of that particular group, um, what you would find is very hardworking people that execute at a high level that are very visionary in regards to always becoming better. They're always learning. They're always applying and trying new things. And they just, they, they don't settle. They just continue to want growth. My favorite uh, uh, quote about a president ever, not necessarily a quote, but uh, something I read about a, uh, Teddy Roosevelt is that even on his deathbed, he had a book underneath his, his pillow. And I think that you'll see that, that the people at the highest level of this, they grinded their way early on. They continue to set up better, repeatable systems, hire the best people that they could, hold those people accountable, execute at a high level, and always be curious of better ways to do things. That I mean, I know that's a, a lot that I just wrapped up in there, but that's the common uh, characteristics that you will see at the highest level people. Time and execution, right? The people that are just two, three years into this that are typically in our elevate or our select level... I always tell them the only difference between you, what I see characteristics between you and them is the only difference is just time. You're 25 and they're 55. That's the only difference is just time and execution. Right. And you're going to turn around it, turn into who you hang around with. So if you're that 25 year old <laughs> hanging around people that are 55 crushing it. Yes. Likelihood they're going to rub off on you a little bit. It's funny that you say that because now with all these gray hairs in the side of my head, I, I get called Uncle Leon all the time, especially <laughs> especially at our select and elevate levels. I'm now the veteran that it's like, you know, you're a big Steelers fan. I, I'm the veteran wide receiver that the rookies come and say, hey, hey, veteran, you know, hey, vet, talk to me about how do I run this route? How do I get open? That's what you get in these communities because even at our lower levels, and I say lower levels, these are still people doing, you know, two, three deals a month that are as our lowest level because we don't do entry level newbies. But even those individuals, you know, they get premier level talent that leads their room, whether that's myself or Eric Brewer in York, PA or Jimmy Vreeland in St. Louis or in Bartlett in Alabama, Stephanie Betters in Charlotte. They have all these people around them. You, Brian, is a great example at Select and Elevate as well, that they can ask the questions of, hey, I'm doing all these things. What do you think? What do you see? Keep doing what you're doing. Maybe add this, maybe add that. That That is, you, you're talking about iron sharpening iron. That's like a, you know, a, a Excalibur blade versus a dagger that's helping them sharpen that dagger until they get to that point where they're a little longer in the tooth. Yeah. Really good points there too. Leon, so if someone's interested in chatting about CG, what's the best way to connect? Yeah, good question. The best way is to first, you know, we want to make sure that everyone is a is a great fit for this community. So if you're a full-time investor doing, you know, a couple deals a month, then more than likely we have a community for you. The best way to find out, you know, what the parameters are for those community is at thecollectivegenius.com. Check us out there. You can also follow us on Instagram or Facebook, um, you know, and I would encourage, even if you're not ready, say let's, you know, you're listening to this and you're someone that, um, is using, um, uh, motivated leads and you're trying to continue to grow your business and, and you don't qualify yet, follow us. There are so many great gives that we have a weekly email that we send out, uh, that is just, here, here's what we're, here's what we're doing right now within this community. So the best way to get a hold of us is going through that website and also on the social media side. Cool. All right. We'll put that uh, link in the show notes. Hey, Leon, is there anything else we wanted to cover that we skipped over? Good question. Um, at this point, I don't think so. Other than I can't wait to see you at our December event. We were just planning for it. Um, we do that. That's the one thing I will tell everybody is that this is full time for this is not a, a side hustle. 
We take every individual meeting. We do seven meetings a year. Two of the higher level groups meet four times a year. The next two levels, they meet three times a year. And we are planning every single week for those meetings. So our December meeting, we've got two keynotes. Actually, now I think potentially three keynotes lined up. So it's always... You know, our leadership team is like our board of directors and always saying, here's what we're hearing on the streets for uh, that we need more of innovation. We need more sales. We need more marketing. So I'm excited for that event. And it's, you know, goodness, it's already um, almost the end of the year and excited to, to go into our theme for this uh, December event is Thrive in 25. And that's our hope for everybody, not only in our community, but for all those investors that are listening to this that are looking to grow. Hey, well, thanks for coming on, Leon. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me, Brian. Much appreciated. Hey, one question for you. What's the top book you'd recommend? Oh, good question. Good question. Good question. I need to look over here because um, there are so many good ones that uh, I have been recommended. I can't keep up. There are like 30 book recommendations every single meeting uh, that we get. Um <sighs> My favorite recommendation, especially for real estate investors, let's say somebody currently um, is a one-man band, they're doing this with maybe them and a few VAs, is Buy Back Your Time uh, by Dan Martell. That's a great book because a lot of us that are in this are either former athletes or love sports. And it really breaks down how you can turn uh, systems and processes into playbooks. For a lot of us, we either played football or we played uh, basketball. We understand plays and we understand that if you need to run a play correctly, you need to see the play, play and, and, and go over it and over it and over it and buy back your time by Dan Martell is a really, really good one to take that same concept and gamify almost work and business to continue to scale and grow. Yeah, that's, that is a great book. I read that one. That's a, that's a really good one. It's a good listen as well because the author actually uh, does the audible version of it. So it's a really good listen as well. Cool, man. Hey, well, thanks for coming on. We appreciate you, Leon. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. Until next time, get out there, crush some deals. We'll see you guys.